What is up guys? Hey, my name is Kyle and welcome to my TED Talk. I wanna start by just telling you guys a story. Um, it involves a Taco Bell in the hood, Bush Gardens, and an altercation. Not too long ago, me and some of my friends, my coworkers, we went to a place called Bush Gardens. It's a theme park up in Tampa. And it was, it was nighttime, it was dark, it was time to go home. Um, so we all went outside, we went to the parking lot, we hopped in our minivan. Was it my minivan? No, but we got in the minivan and we drove off. And then the second thing that's important to know is we were really hungry, so we did what you would probably expect. We went to Taco Bell, of course. As we got there, um, and, and a situation was unfolding because two cars in front of us kind of got there at the same time to the drive-through, you know, where it's like, oh, do you go, do I go? And so this one car decides, you know what, I was here like a little bit earlier. I think it's my right to go first, get my tacos ahead of time. So they pull forward, right? Um, and then the other car, you just be like, okay, so they're gonna get in line, right? Wrong. This second car is um, what I can only describe as most likely being driven by someone named Karen. And so what they, what they decided to do is instead of getting into line, they went to try to get into the little tiny space in between the car that had just got there. And like, it's just like right in there. It's like, it's, this is not where you go. This is not what you do. Another fun fact, our minivan had a sunroof and it was open. So we could kind of hear everything that was going on around us, right? So these two cars all of a sudden put their windows down and they just start, they just start having words. And these are words I cannot share with you right now. I'd get fired. And they're going back and forth and yelling, it's crazy. We're getting, we're mildly entertained in the minivan back there. Just like, this, this is amazing. But what happened next is the person got out of their car and started to walk over to the other car. And if you've ever seen any ra like road rage videos, this is, this is, this is the part where it gets it gets bad. Um, thing like you don't want to be a part of this. You don't mess with this person. And so the guy goes up to the car. They, they keep yelling, and finally Karen gives in. She's like, you know what? You got it. I'm so sorry. Uh, ah. Uh, and so like they they go and they're, they're she backs up and everything. But the the noteworthy thing and the reason I tell this story is because as they were walking away, they turned back and they said, if you're gonna talk about it, be about it. And I was like, word, but like really quietly in the minivan because I was like, I'm not trying to get involved. I just want tacos. But if you're going to talk about it, be about it. So I want to share with you guys a passage in the Bible in James chapter one that I think is the biblical equivalent of saying, if you're going to talk about it, let's be about it. So I'm going to read James one verse 22 to 27. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you have heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Shots, biblical shots fired, I would say. Um, verse 27 says, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for the orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So a question I have for you is, have you ever felt like maybe a little bit frustrated with God's word or the way his plan is going for your life? Because for me, I have. I've, I've asked the question like, well, what's, I'm, I'm doing this whole Christian thing, man. I'm going to church, I'm doing all the things, but I still feel like I don't have this joy and this peace that the people at church tell me about. I, f I feel like I don't feel God moving in my life. And if, if you've ever asked that question, I believe that some of the answers to a question like that might be found in this passage here. Verse, verse 22, it said, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. See. The question that I have today is, I wonder if maybe sometimes we deceive ourselves. We, we go to, we do all the things. We go to the church services, to the, we're, every Bible study. We sit in the front row at church, but yet we're still like, well, what's going on? Why is this not working? I wonder if we deceive ourselves by just doing that. Because verse 22, it said pretty clearly, don't just listen to the word of God. You must do what it says. So listening isn't enough. But rather what my friend at Taco Bell said is, you gotta be about it. You gotta you got do the word of God. Verse 27 says, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for the orphans and widows in their distress, AKA helping those people who are in need and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So what does it mean to be about the word of God? I think that means taking Jesus from our church services, taking him from our Bible studies, from our Spotify playlist with Hillsong and Bethel, and taking him with us to the real world. 
so that what, what, we, what we experience in church, what we experience in all these things, isn't just there, but it actually comes with us when we go out into the world. I think being about it looks like showing love to everybody, showing love to them because Jesus loved you when you were all messed up. I think it might look like going out and seeking out the person who needs a friend. I think it looks like sharing the good news of who Jesus is with people who haven't heard it before. I think it might look like trying to live a life of righteousness up to the standard that God has called us to do. And finally, I think what it looks like to be about it is to make sure that God is the center of our life no matter what, the focus of everything, not just what we're doing when we're in church or reading our Bible, but in everything that we do, God being the center. See, I think if, if, God, if we're gonna be about it, if we're gonna be about, be doers of the word like this, this passage calls us to do, it means going all in for him every part of your life. See, at the beginning of this, um, this talk here, I, I asked the questions, I wonder if we're deceiving ourselves. I wonder if the reason we're so confused when God isn't working in our life and why we're confused at like, why well, you don't have this peace and this joy, I wonder if it's because we've only followed half of the instructions. And instead of being doers of the word, we've just been listeners and we've just been hearers. So today, I wanna encourage you guys, I wanna challenge you, if you're listening to this right now, to join me in making sure that we're not just hearers of the word, that our experience with God doesn't stop from when we read the Bible or listen to a worship song, but we actually become doers of the word. We're, we're ministers of his peace, love, joy, no matter what happens to us at all times. Because I don't wanna just be a hearer of the word. I wanna be just like my friend at the Taco Bell in Tampa. I don't wanna just hear about it. I don't wanna just talk about it. But when it comes to the word of God, I wanna be about it. So let's pray together. God, thank you so much for your love and your grace. I thank you for your word and the instructions that you've given us. I pray that you would just give us the strength and the, and the knowledge, God, that you would give us the grace to live out your word in every part of our life so that we might be an amazing ambassador for you. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.